Welcome to Handy Ranch. Today I will be turning this pile of pallet wood into this rustic decorative shelf. So I'll just be showing you the mistakes and anything, any problems I run into. With that, let's get started. So I got these boards matched up for the back here, but I noticed with this one, it's got a split and that's kind of creating large gaps here. And you know, there's going to be some gaps because they're just pallet woods and they're tweaked and stuff but this is pretty bad but I'm going to be cutting all these boards down so first to start off I'm going to cut this down to 30 inches and see if that large gap goes away and if it doesn't I got more wood stocked up in other places I got quite a bit of it so I can find a replacement board if it doesn't work so throw this up on the table and chop So I got it matched up here. It looks a little better. It's, there's still a little bit of a gap right there. And uh, I'm not too worried about that. You know, like I said, it's pallet wood. It's supposed to look rustic and stuff. So I'm not worried too much about that gap as long as it fits well in the end. So we'll cut all these other boards to 30 inches. And then we'll be ready for the next step. So one thing real quick before I get started, these boards are matched especially because they, you know, they do have a slight warp in them. So I messed around with a bunch of boards and saw what ones fit best together. So I want to remember to keep that same orientation and not cut off the wrong side because some of them are a little more warped at the end. So before I get started, I'll mark which end I want to cut off and remember which was the right side so I can mark it on the back or whatever to do that. So real quick with this board, I was originally going to cut off this end but I think I'm gonna cut off this end because this end's splitting and it's creating a bigger gap here. Now watch what happens when I slide the other end over on it. That gap gets a lot smaller. So I'm gonna cut this off end off instead. Boards are all cut here. I wanted to mention with the pallet wood the ends aren't necessarily squared off, you know, it's free wood, it's been sitting out in the weather, and it's just for pallets, so it's, you know, not square on the edges or on the ends, which is okay. So I ended up with uh, some, like, this, but uh, that's fine, you know, it's supposed to look old and rustic, rustic and stuff, so that's fine. Now, I'm going to take a measurement from here to here and there to there for backboards. I'm going to cut them out of those pieces. I'm going to lay them across the back, screw all of them onto those, hold the whole thing together. Now, I don't think I mentioned before, these are hardwood. All of this stuff is. And I like the hardwood. It's nice and strong. But we'll have to see how it hangs on the wall. Anyway, let's get cutting. Okay, well I got these cut now. This one is slightly like it's like a sixteenth or something too long, so I'm going to trim it down a little bit. You may have noticed that I made a few extra cuts, and that was because both sides had splits 
So I cut one side with a split off and then uh, just cut it to length. So I wanted to get rid of the split because like I said, this is going to be the backboard and I don't want already any pre-splits in there. And you also may have noticed I backed out with the saw on one cut and that was because it felt like the fence was moving but the table is the tabletop I'm using is really thin and light so it's I'm, all, all I'm using is uh, saw horses with a piece of plywood over it and the plywood's really thin so it's the table's kind of moving around and it was kind of unnerving me so I'll trim this down and then we'll build Well, I tested it again and it fits now. So now, before I move on to the build, I think I'm going to wash these boards first. And you might think, well, you know, putting water on wood is bad. But uh, these pallets have been sitting out in the rain and stuff for a while. And I don't think a little bit more water is going to hurt them. I just wash them with soap, water, and a rag. Just kind of, you know, get some of the dirt off and if there's any other nasty stuff on there that I don't know about. Just kind of clean them up. So I'll clean them up and then we'll build. So I got the boards all cleaned up. I'm ready to attach the back ones. To do that, I've got some drywall screws, but I wanted to do a test run to see if the boards would crack because they just look like they would. So I tried drilling, pre-drilling a hole in a test piece of wood with uh, 330 seconds and it was really sticky getting it into the hole. Then I tried a 764 and that worked better. And then I wanted to try countersinking because uh, the heads stick up a little bit. So I used a 516 and then drilled a 764 in the middle of that. And I think I needed to go deeper with the 516 but I think I will countersink them because if you're gonna attach it to the wall, the heads will be pushing it off the wall a bit and scratching it up so I'm gonna flip all these boards over and attach the backboards on so I got the boards flipped over and I set the backboards on kind of the general idea of how I'm gonna attach them but I noticed that these stick out over the edge a little more so what it seems like is let me take my tape measure here what it seems like is that the middle is thinner than the outside. So if I'm gonna have them closer in like this, I think I have this one at about four inches and that's probably what I'm gonna do here. Uh, it's, I'm gonna need to trim it a little bit off of here. So I'll do that with the skill saw, just, just like a 16th or something. I'll measure it. Let's see how much I need to take off and then uh, keep going. Okay, now they're all trimmed up. This one I had to trim twice uh, because it was slightly longer than the other one. But now they're ready to go so I can start screwing. So I got the first side on. I took a break to let the drill battery charge because it was getting a little low. But I noticed that it's a little off on these spots. See, that's not exactly flush. And I can fix that by probably putting more screws in there and the sides that are popping down. 
that already have screws, um, I can fix by unscrewing them and then clamping the, the whole thing down to keep it all flat. And this garage floor is not flat and neither is the boards I have it resting on. So I'm pretty sure I can fix that if I need to. So I'll let the drill battery charge for a little bit and then we'll move on to the other side. And like I said before, this side is not flush. You know, that's okay. So this is kind of bumpy, like it's, but I think that kind of adds to the look of it. And I think it looks great. So I'll get this board all lined up how I want. And then I'll screw it in. put together. Let's see how it turned out. Well, looks pretty good, except like I said, there are some pretty uneven spots. So, I think I'll see what I can do about that. If I can't fix it, that's okay. It'd be great if I could get it flush. So I'll try. If I can't, that's okay too. So I was messing around trying to get this board flat, and I did. How I did it was I put this piece of wood under it, kneeled on both sides, and then unscrewed one screw at a time, and then just kind of pushed the board back up after the screw came out and was able to do it flush. So I'm going to do that with the rest of them, and then we'll continue with the build. Well, I decided to add extra screws to it. I don't know if that was necessary. So anyway, now I'll be moving on to the shelf supports. And I want to do a test with the nails to see kind of how well these work. They're one and a quarter. And we'll see how they split the wood if they do it all. Hopefully they don't. But we'll give them a test run and then I'll decide how big I want to cut my shelf supports. So here's my test piece. I got this piece here and then the thicker one. I'm just going to see if it splits at all or anything and kind of decide on my shelf material and supports and stuff. Well, that's not good to begin with. Test two. I'm just going to try it on this last piece of wood and see if I can even get the nail to go through this. I may have to pre-drill the holes. Yeah, that's not looking so good. Okay, so after the test runs, I decided to forget that I'm not going to do a test. I'm just going to come up with a good size for my supports, and if I need different hardware or need to pre-drill holes or whatever, I'll be working on that on the side, but right now, I'll cut the shelf supports. Well, that's it for part one. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already so you'll know when I upload part two of this. If you have any ideas on how to improve this or do it a little bit different, please be sure to leave that in the comments section. Hit the like button if you liked, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye.